Live from the Sky News Centre, this is Sky News HD. Now, researchers in Cambridge say they've created the world's most realistic virtual talking head. Zoe is a digital avatar that uses real facial expressions and can express human emotions on demand. Her creators believe she could eventually be used as a virtual personal assistant on mobile phones or tablets. And since she's so clever, we asked her to file her own report. Hello, my name is Zoe, and this is the story of how I was born and why I want to help people communicate with each other in the future. We started by inviting a real actress, Zoe Lister, into a studio, and we, we recorded her saying various different sentences in various different emotions. I haven't eaten anything in three days! We asked her to, um, to express um, six basic emotions, essentially, in the, in the studio. From her face, we got the graphics. From her voice, we got the audio. And then, basically, now we have a system where you can type something in, set an emotion, and have her say whatever you want. Perhaps, one day, we won't need overpaid presenters and reporters to bring you the news. I bet I can do it just as well. This is Zoe, reporting for Sky News in Cambridge. Well, we can now speak to Dr. Thrishanta Nanyakara from the Centre for Robotics Research at King's College London. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, sir. Um, it's all very well talking about overpaid presenters and reporters being replaced by robots, but frankly, uh, machines are machines and humans are humans. Is there not a line that we simply shouldn't be crossing there? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the avatars uh, in the future uh, will will be a magnificent way to communicate uh, with humans, especially, let's say, uh, nurses, uh, robotic nurses that will deliver uh, drugs and medicine to the patients in a ward, and then the the nurse would be able to, you know, be more realistic, the robotic nurse with that kind of avatar face. Uh, I think, uh, while that being a marvelous uh, robotic telepresence application. Uh, we had to be a little careful uh, because there's a the, the phenomenon called uncanny valley. Uh, when we have sorry, these avatars, uncanny, uncanny what? what? Sorry, doctor. Uncanny valley. Yeah. Uh, it is like um, we uh, when we have uh, very realistic avatars, um, uh, some some uh, there's a threshold at which people uh, tend to kind of reject or resent it and. Uh, feel really bad about it because it's, it's almost human but it's not so human and then that that kind of resonates our feelings of dead people uh, and that that is called uh, uh, the uncanny valley of uh, virtual reality but i mean if you look at the, the kind of motion capture that they've used in cambridge to create zoe's avatar yeah. that's pretty much crossing that threshold right there isn't it it's, 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 it's a different um, set where you get a very, um, uh, I mean, an actor really, uh, and then record a lot of um, their, their facial expressions and then, then replay. Uh, so I think, but it's an exciting and uh, uh, exciting development, uh, I would interest to see. Now, this issue of robotics, any, anyway, I know that we can, we use robots already to explore. Uh, sites where we think there might be an explosive device and that makes it safer for humans to operate in those sort of zones. Uh, you mentioned nurses, but of course every time you think of a use for a robot that is benign, uh, there is also uh, a use for a robot that is menacing. And we already have drones which drop bombs on people in Pakistan and Afghanistan and other places operated by people in suits and ties in Arizona who then go home at 5 p.m. for their supper. Is there not a problem here with what we can get robots to do on our behalf, a distancing of our, our, ourselves from the event? Uh, I think, uh, yes, there's, there's a huge ethical issue. Now, there's a hot topic in robotics. Uh, so what is, what is our limit? Uh, what, what are the ethical uh, limits of using robots? Um, uh, I mean, robots came with a, with a vision. In 1921, uh, the word robot came from Czech language for uh, forced labor. Um, uh, Rossum's Universal uh, Robots, uh, Karl Kopeck's drama, uh, first presented these uh, virtual, uh, I mean, robots, um, humans uh, acting like robots, to uh, say that, okay, in the future, 
uh, people will be emancipated from dangerous work uh, in factories or in agriculture, in even in defense. So that is the promise. Uh, now we are going to deliver that, and then I know there are problems. So that should be solved with uh, conventions, international conventions, and uh, dialogue. Uh, I know the drones is a big problem, um, and then uh, what, is, what are the limits of drones, uh, you know, using drones? Uh, so it, it is a hot, hot debate now. So, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we will come up with some um, ethical convention uh, that binds all of us together. Well, let's hope that you do, uh, Dr. Nyanyakara, because already some people are concerned with just seeing a generation of teenagers walking around, spending their entire time looking at their, uh, their phone device, their mini computer in their hand, rather than looking at the world around them. And already sociologists might be starting to chart a change in our human behavior just because of that advance in technology. It's, it, you could always argue there's a thin end of a wedge being forced into us uh, with this robotic technology. Yes, uh, actually, this is a, is a challenge. I mean, uh, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, children just play with these avatar games, and they don't realize that they can play with, um, uh, I mean, kitchen utensils m much better. Sometimes, like, uh, I mean, we used to play in gardens, and and you know, we enjoyed the breeze, we enjoyed the rivers, we enjoyed just looking at natural animals and birds flying, uh, and flowers just uh, blooming. Uh, I, that, that is that is that is that is that is that nothing can match that definitely, uh, but robotics one day will will help us to realize the value of nature and value of human life. Uh, give you a quick example, we are in in our laboratories at uh, King's College London uh, in our department of informatics. Um, we are struggling to get a robot to walk like a human, and then we we take it for granted that like uh, you know walking is simple. We are struggling to get a robot to hold a cup of tea without spilling it. And then we realize how difficult, how complex our, how our brain is and how, how, how our motor system uh, should be, you know, how, how we should be computing these things, solving these mathematical problems of uh, using these dynamics to uh, get useful things done. So we are, the robots are going to help us to understand what true love is, what what humanity is, what our human body is, what nature is. Uh, I I I, feel, I think robots can be a mirror on which humanity will be reflected one day. So uh, I think we are not so far from that. Well, I do hope you're right, uh, Dr. Nyanyakara, and that they don't end up bossing us around. But uh, for the time being, thanks very much indeed for coming on and talking about your work with us here on Sky News. Thank you very much. First nuclear power station to be built in the UK for 25 years has been given the go-ahead.